One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. So one of the special things about being a content creator for many, many years now is that I get to share stories of wisdom, mistakes, lessons learned, cautionary tales, and today's episode is really centered all around that. So whether it's you taking a break for personal reasons or you just need to step away from your business or your content for a while, I get so many questions about how to do this properly and what happens if you do this. And today I actually had a question from a member of Profit Podcasting who sent in an email. They were like, I don't think I can make it to our monthly coaching call, can you answer this email, you know, answer this question? And I was like, absolutely. And because I've seen it come up so, so much about taking breaks and how to do it, I thought I would read this question to you and share my insights as if you are one of my profit podcasting students. Like this is my digital course and I give them, you know, preferential treatment and they are my VIPs, but I thought today it would be fun to treat you just like one of my VIPs and give you the lowdown on how I would answer this if you are asking this question today. So let's get right to it. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, welcome back. I am so excited about this question, because like I said, I've gotten so many versions of it over the years, but I just want to read it verbatim at how it came into me so that you can have a little bit more context around why this student is taking a break, what happened and all the things. So it says, I was out sick for a few days. 
who hasn't been, right? Like if you can't tell, I have a cold right now. So (laughs) I totally understand when you have to take a break for your own personal sickness, but let's keep on reading. My podcast published and I was not able to market or do any promotions for about five days after, and I saw a 30% drop in my downloads. Very interesting. Also, playing with specific day of my emails to promote and social media. So they're talking about like they're trying to play around with, well, when do I send my email? When do I promote it on social media? And just a few points I've observed when I don't promote. Pros, my podcast still was published thanks to batching. Let's just give a shout out to batching. Who doesn't love a good batching process, right? (laughs) The other pro I was able to promote once I was back in the office. So those are the two pros that they pointed out, which I think is great. Like what what a fantastic approach. (laughs) Then the observations, right? We could call these the cons. My downloads took a hit when I didn't send out my email on my regular scheduled day. I didn't post to my group page or IG, LinkedIn, any of those. And then sound bites make a huge pickup for me When I posted, even on a Saturday, my downloads increased. Not sure if that's what it is, but it may be. Would love your insights into the importance of marketing your episodes and tips to measure. So thank you so much for asking this question. It's such a great one, and I love the context behind it because, um, like they said, they still publish their episode, right? Um, I actually just went through this um, for this entire month. I knew I was going to be out of town. I was taking this fabulous trip to New York with my family and leading up to it, I was like, man, I've got to bust my butt to get all of this content batched and scheduled. That way I didn't have to work while I was there. I don't travel with a laptop. I know that like shocks some people. When I went to go see my friend Heather last year in Oregon, we were talking about running this event and she was like, well, you know, we could just use your laptop. I was like, "Mm, I have an iPad. Like, I don't, I don't travel with a laptop. I have my nice, beautiful desktop gaming computer. That's like a monster, but it's not a laptop. So when I travel, I literally just have my phone or my iPad. I mean, I guess if I'm traveling with my husband and he takes his computer, like that's a backup, but that thing is so heavy that he's usually like, I'm not traveling with my laptop. I don't blame him. So that's where we are. Like I didn't want to have to do anything while I was on vacation. And this is a planned scenario, right? Because I knew I was going to be out of office. I could plan ahead for it. Therefore, I batched an entire month's worth of content, all of my podcast episodes, all of my YouTube videos, all of my email newsletters. Like I had everything done before I left for this trip. And thank goodness, because I got back from the trip and now I have a cold and did not feel like recording over the last week. So I've never been more grateful to have had a few interviews and content pieces batched so I didn't have to worry about it. But let's go back to this person's problem because they were sick, right? This is unplanned. It was totally unplanned. And there could be other things that happen in life, not even just a sickness. Like we just had uh, one of our kiddos had an accident. He was uh, you know, driving his scooter home from school. He had an accident. He has a really bad sprain in his ankle. And that totally took focus off of the next few days of what we had originally planned to do. Like we had to switch it up. We had to flip the script and say, okay, well, none of those things are going to happen anymore. He was supposed to have like several basketball games, basketball practice. That's not happening. And we had to be flexible with what we were doing, but also take time out to go to doctor's appointments and, you know, schedule stuff with the school and make sure he's up to date. So there are absolutely unexpected things that can happen. And I just want you to kind of look at your own content. This is why I always, always, always recommend having a content calendar that is full of ideas. Notice I didn't say full of content that's already planned and recorded and edited and ready to go at a moment's notice. No, no, no. I'm talking about content that's already planned as far as this is the idea. So when I came back, like I'm just getting back into the swing of things, recording, you know, the next month's content and all the things that I need to do, I am looking at what are all the ideas that I have and how can I make those work for 
what I have over the next month. And that's really where I start, right? It's baby stepping into it. So if you know, like, oh, I'm coming down with something like unexpectedly and I'm going to be out, the first thing that I always, always tell people when they know they're going to be out sick is one, you absolutely have permission to skip. <laughs> skip your content. People think it's life or death and they think that I'm going to tell them, oh no, you cannot, absolutely not skip a week of your podcast or publish a YouTube video or send out a newsletter your audience, they're, they're not monsters. They know that you're a human. At least I hope that they do. At least I hope that you talk to them in a way that is clear and transparent and they understand things happen. People have compassion and I always lean to the side of, oh no, my audience will get this because my audience is like me in those regards. And so first of all, give yourself lots of grace. This is what I always recommend. And the other piece of it is really just taking a step back and say, what's absolutely necessary? So if you find yourself, you're like, okay, I have the content ready. It's going to be scheduled. It's going to be published. Like if it's a podcast episode or a YouTube video, that's great. That's the most important piece. That's the most important piece is that content piece going out. Now, you can't post on Instagram. You can't post on TikTok or you can't get your newsletter out. It's not the end of the world. Again, let's go back and give us lots and lots of grace. But I do want you to take a step back when you come back from your sickness or your unexpected thing. What, like, wh where did the systems fall down? And I'm always asking this question when something unexpected happens or, you know, someone's out of office suddenly that you weren't expecting. Like if you have someone that's helping you on a regular basis and then, oh, you know, something happens in their life unexpectedly. And now they have to take several days off and you're like, oh my gosh, like this was not expected. What do I do? Blah, blah, blah. Well, this is an opportunity to create new systems and processes. So what does this look like? So for me, it looks like scheduling as much as possible. So these were my three recommendations to, you know, the person that asked this question. It's schedule your emails if possible, schedule your social post, and schedule those sound bites. Because remember, that's what they said. Like my downloads took a hit when I didn't put out my email on my regular day. I didn't post to my group, my page, like on social. And I didn't put out my sound bites. So how can you on a more regular basis plan to have that go out routinely or in a proper cadence that's consistent with you publishing your other content? Now, what does this look like for me? For me, this looks like instead of just sitting down and writing one email newsletter every single week, it looks like how about writing two or three, like in one sitting, or maybe one a day for four days until I have a full month's worth. Now, this doesn't re like require editing and scheduling and doing all of that. It's just the first part. I mean, I've said this till, I mean, I'm blue in the face about my prep -and method. So if you're not familiar, that's plan, record, edit, publish, and market. These are the steps that I take for any piece of content that I create, but it's really important because when I talk about batching, it's not just in the recording. I think this is where I get so frustrated when people are like, well, Crystal, I can't batch. You know, I don't have that much time to record content. And I'm like, Batching isn't just about recording multiple videos, multiple podcast episodes. It can mean that you are batch planning a bunch of stuff or batch editing. So whenever I sit down and write four emails in a row, I'm not sitting down and also editing and scheduling and publishing. No, no, no. I am just writing them. I'm getting the thoughts and ideas out of my head onto paper, in a Google Doc, in a sauna, like wherever you are putting your content, get it out of your head, right? This is the first one. You are planning everything. Editing is a totally different monster. It's a different mindset. You need to have, you know, your glasses and your red pen out ready to change things and cut things and make them better and make them sound fantastic. That is a different, like I'm a different person, okay? Like I need to come up with the five personalities of the PREPA method because Crystal who's in planning mode is very different than Crystal that is in editing mode. Like the editing mode, she's ruthless. She's she's pretty like, I mean, let's just call it, it's sadistic at times whenever I'm editing a newsletter, I'm editing a script, I'm looking through things like 
it is a very different monster than more of the planning. Like the planning crystal is very free form and creative and flowing. And now like, as I'm sitting here talking about this, I, I literally have just planned like an Instagram reel or a really good YouTube video of me walking through the different personalities that I have because you have to show up that way. So I'm, I'll get off my soapbox in a second, but really when it comes to batching, I want you to think outside the box of just recording everything. How can you batch plan more of your content so that when a sickness comes up for you or someone in your family, you are able to take the time off that you deserve. You deserve to take that time off. You don't deserve to be stressed out in a doctor's office trying to figure out how to get your podcast out or you know, you're know you traveling on the road planning TikToks or worried about, oh my gosh, I don't have internet service and now I can't post this Instagram reel that had to go out today. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's really not. It's not worth that stress that it's causing you or your family. And I really want you to focus on healing, recovering, getting better, or caring for your loved ones in those times when you need to. But I want to talk about one more thing because this is what I'm calling permission to break cadence. And really, this just means permission to do whatever the heck you want to do. And if you've been around here for a while, you know, I say this all the time, there are no rules in podcasting, but I'm going to stretch that to all of content creation. There aren't. Like, there are no rules. If people tell you that there are rules, like, turn around and run the other way. You will never hear me say, these are the five rules of podcasting, and if you don't stick to these, then you're not a podcaster, and you're a loser, and you're going to fail. No, no, no. There are guidelines, sure. They, like, should you have good quality audio so people can actually hear what you're saying? Absolutely. If you're recording video, should you have things that aren't super distracting or, you know, good lighting? Absolutely. These are guidelines, but there are no rules. So if you need to take time off, take freaking time off, recover, feel better. The only recommendation that I would have for you is let your audience know, whether that's through an email, it's a social post, it's, you know, a quick two minute episode on your podcast that says, hey guys, you know, and you can share as much information as you want. You say, hey, I'm gonna be out of office. Like I'm gonna be out of touch for four weeks, six weeks, six months, whatever that break is, just let your audience know because then they will be so excited to op like welcome you back with open arms whenever you do return to your content. But if you ghost your audience, they're gonna ghost you back. And they're not going to be waiting with open arms when you return. They're going to say, oh, yeah, she just ghosted us and completely forgot about us. Like, I forgot to go back and listen to her content because why would I? She hasn't been here for six months. And now she showed up and just expected the relationship to pick up right where it left off. And I understand that's not how it works. So I love this question so much. I really wanted to cover it because it's one that, again, I've heard so many variations of this over the years. And I think it's important that, you know, we just keep bringing it up. There's a reason why people continue to ask me about taking breaks in their content. And like I said earlier, I'm actually in the middle of suffering from a head cold, sinus headache, all the things. I actually feel better today than I have the last few days. But I want to touch on one final thing that I do recommend when people know that they have to take a sudden break and they're like, how do I do this? Like, let's say you know that you're going to unexpectedly be out of town for a month. What do you do? Do you just take the whole month off? Do you adjust your content? Like, what do you do? If it were me, what I would do is adjust your expectations. So what does that look like? Maybe that looks like making everything shorter. If you typically have a podcast that is 30 minutes, what if it was five or 10 minutes? I know it makes some people really uncomfortable when I say that, but think about the reality of batching that kind of content. To record a single 30-minute episode, that's going to take you 30 minutes. If you do that four times for a month, I mean, that's two hours right there that it would take you just to record it. That doesn't include editing, publishing, all those other things. But what if that all of a sudden turned into a 10-minute episode? Now, to record four 10-minute episodes, that's 40 minutes. 
two hours, 40 minutes. Like, I mean, it's quite the comparison. And like I said, you can make it even shorter. You can make those five minutes. Five minutes times four, that's 20 minutes to record. And don't you tell me that there's not power in a five minute episode. I ran a podcast for three years. It was five minutes every single day, Monday through Friday. And that podcast had so much power. So if something unexpectedly happened and I had to record this podcast and it could only be five minutes, I am so confident I can make a super powerful gesture in just five minutes. So I know it can happen. Adjust your expectations. Make it to where it doesn't have to be as long as it normally is. That's for a podcast or a YouTube video. Same thing with a newsletter. Shorten it from what you know is typically a page in a Google Doc. What if it was like five sentences? Like just adjust it. Adjust your expectations and make sure that you are still focused on your audience because that's what they care about. It's how does this add value to me? How is this going to improve my life? Save me time, save me money, entertain me, all the things. But that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this quick, quicker episode. I, I'm taking my own advice. This episode is shorter than my typical ones, but it's because I'm adjusting to recovering myself. And I hope that you found today's episode super valuable. If you did, make sure that you are subscribed or following wherever you are listening or watching today. Make sure you check out all the other content that we have that can help you with taking breaks and time management when it comes to your content. But that's all I have for you today. So as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners. Thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called fan mail shout outs. And I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.